This morning we are thinking about the power of memory. It's a weekend when we as a country take time to set aside and remember, and uh, there's a, a significant thing I want us to think about this morning about how memory works in the life of faith, not just in the life of our country, but in the life following after Jesus. Memory is one of those things, uh, it can come up at any time. There's so many things that can spark memory for us. It can be uh, an event, it can be a smell, it can be some kind of sound. It can so easily take us back to something that happens in the past. Oh, that takes me back, is what we say when memory is sparked in us. Could be smells, could be sounds, could be the snare drum intro of Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA, which takes me back to my parents' basement in fifth grade, on Fifth Street when um, I would listen to that album over and over and over again on my plastic Fisher-Price record player because I'm that cool <laughs> and I am that old. There's so many things that can spark memory for us. Sometimes it's accidental. Sometimes we just stumble upon a memory that we didn't know about. And sometimes they're not always pleasant. Not every memory is as great as listening to the boss. Sometimes memories can be painful. They can um, bring up hard feelings for us. But what I want us to think about this morning is not those accidental memories that we sort of stumble across, but intentional memory when we take time to set aside and remember what's most important. God, in the Old Testament particular, especially, is always reminding his people to remember. Remember what God has said. Remember what God has done. Remember what God has promised. And so this is a significant part of what it means to, to follow after Jesus, to live a life pursuing God is this act of remembering, but it's one that we so often forget. So there's this one moment that I want to look at uh, early in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, where God institutes a kind of practice, a, a, a way for the people to continue, continue to intentionally remember what's most important. And this happens in this moment where the people of Israel had been in slavery in Egypt for 430 years, and God was in the process of setting them free. And he was doing that by kind of this these series of miracles by which he was doing battle against their Egyptian oppressors. And the last one was became known as the Passover. And it was this uh, moment when God told the people that they would, should put the blood of a lamb on the doorposts of their houses. And if they did that, the judgment of God would pass over them as God did battle with those oppressors. And in the midst of this, he um, it tells Moses, his servant, to instruct the people to do something to remember this event. And it can be found on page 62 of the Bible, if you want to follow along. It's in Exodus chapter 12. In verse 3, we read this. Then Moses said to the people, Commemorate this day. Remember this day. The day you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand. Eat nothing containing yeast. That was because God told them not to bake yeast into their bread so that they didn't have to wait for it to rise so they could leave quickly. Eat nothing containing yeast. Today, in the month of Aviv, you are leaving. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, the land he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you are to observe this ceremony in this month. For seven days eat bread made without yeast, and on the seventh day hold a festival to the Lord. Eat unleavened bread during those seven days. Nothing with yeast in it is to be seen among you, nor shall any yeast be seen anywhere within your borders. On that day, tell your children... I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that this law of the Lord is to be on your lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. You must keep this ordinance at the appointed time, year after year. 
So I want us to look at this example of an intentional memory being instituted, a kind of practice, a way of reminding and remembering, and ask what it has to do with all of our lives of faith. There's a couple things that God is asking his people to do here. One is to remember where they've been. When we remember faithfully in a way that can sustain us and nurture us, that's one of the things that we're invited to do, to remember where we've been. That means that we're not just remembering the triumphs and the successes, but also the struggle and the pain. Because part of what Israel needed to remember in this ceremony was that they had been slaves in Egypt. So it's not just the Instagram filter look over our past. It's not denying the hard parts. It's remembering the suffering and the difficulty and the grief. This is something we often try to avoid, but I think that God is inviting us to remember those things because the Passover wouldn't have been nearly as powerful if the people didn't remember what it was that they were being saved from. And so God wants us to intentionally remember where we've been because that reminds us of what he's done and the power of his deliverance in our lives. We remember where we've been, but we also remember where we're going. That's the second part of this kind of active, faithful memory that God calls his people to. In the passage, you might have noticed that he's not only remember, reminding them of what they've come out of, but he's also reminding them they're, that they're going to a land that he's promised to their ancestors. And when they're in that land, he still wants them to remember and rehearse the story of his deliverance. So there are promises that we need to remember as well that kind of draw us forward into the things that God is calling us to. We remember where we've been because that reminds us of what God has done. And we also remember where we're going because it reminds us of what God has promised. And so the people practiced this for centuries, year after year. They would gather, and this kind of faithful, intentional memory sustained them, this ancient community, through exile in Babylon, through oppression under the Romans, through Holocaust in Europe. This kind of active memory has incredible strengthening and shaping power. And one group of Jews who practiced this and remembered this actively was Jesus and his disciples. Although in their memory of it, there are some things that are similar and there are some things that are different. So if you look ahead in the Gospel of Luke on page 962, we see what happens when Jesus and his disciples celebrate the Passover together. Uh, we'll read chapter 22, beginning in verse 15. Jesus said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So when Jesus invites his disciples into this kind of active, intentional way of faithful memory, he invites them to remember where they've been. But the way he does it is to remind them of not so much the crowds and the cheering and the healing and the teaching, but the cross and the suffering and the death, the crucifixion. The symbols that they are to remember are the symbols of his body given for them and his blood shed for them. So Jesus wants to remind them of where they've been so that they can remember their deliverance. They can remember what God has done to rescue them. 
And in the same way, he's inviting them to remember promises that have not come to fulfillment yet. There's this language in the text about the kingdom of God that has not come in its fullness and that Jesus is sort of inviting them to strain forward for that promise. So just like in the Passover, Jesus is inviting his followers to remember where they've been, to remember what God has done, to remember where they're going, to remember what he's promised. But this time, whereas the Passover was recalling a certain kind of deliverance and a certain kind of promised land, Jesus is drawing on a new and deeper and bigger rescue and a more comprehensive and cosmic destination. When we remember where we've been and we remember where we're going, what's amazing is that God changes our situation, changes us in our situations in the here and now. That's what's different about this kind of intentional memory than accidental memory. This is what makes this memory faithful. Because it doesn't just take us back to something that we once remembered. It actually draws something that once happened into our current experience. It it changes us. When, when we remember what God has done and when we remember what he's promised, we find that we get reshaped in the here and now in that moment, which is why he says to do this in remembrance of me, this practice of celebrating the Lord's Supper and actually actively remembering has a powerful shaping force. It's beyond just like memory that happens in our brains. It's a kind of active memory that involves our bodies and it involves our souls. Jesus promises to send his spirit to connect us in some profound and mysterious way with, with God and with one another. And so when we remember rightly, we find that not only does it remind us of something that happened or remind us of something that we hope will happen, but it actually draws us up into the events of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Our story gets woven into that story in a way that changes the direction we're going in. Sometimes we don't experience it profoundly, but the promise is that when we remember in this way, God promises to work in this way. That's why he's invited his people for centuries and centuries to remember. And not just to remember in our minds, but to do this in remembrance of him. Because when we remember faithfully, it changes us. It changes us. So often we think of our memories as being uh, only related to us, things that we think about, things that happen in our own lives. But when we come to the table, there's a reminder. When we practice this in community, as God intended the people of Israel and as Jesus intended his disciples, we remember that we're not alone. We're not alone in this process, this journey of where we've been and where we're going, being transformed from what we shouldn't have been when we, where we shouldn't have, we weren't who we should have been and we weren't where we should have been. As God leads us into this new future, this new promise, he's, he's inviting us to be on that journey with others as well. So when Jesus calls, uh, invites people to do the Passover, he invites them to do it together. And when he invites us to come to the table, he invites us to do it together. Because this faithful remembrance is something that we do together. We support another, one another. We sustain one another. We care for one another. We inspire one another. Every single one of us is in some point on this journey. Maybe we're at the very beginning. Maybe we don't feel like we started. Maybe we feel like we've been on it for a long time. But every one of us has the opportunity to take these moments of intentional memory to ask, do I remember where I've been? Do I remember what God has done? Do I remember where I'm going, what he's promised? And am I open to him shaping that story and shaping me in that story in a new and different way? There's ways that people have done this individually for centuries. Uh, one way is uh, often called an examine. It's just a way of reviewing your day, your week, your year, and asking some questions about um, where I felt close to God. Where have I seen God at work in my day, in my week, in my year? 
Where did I feel distant from God? Where did I feel like God was absent? When were those times? What was happening? And what do I think God is calling me into today or tomorrow? That could take like three minutes. You could do it any weekday at any time. But it's a way of intentionally remembering and intentionally opening ourselves up to the influence of God's spirit and the powerful shaping of this story that we're swept up in. And so this morning, we're going to do this in remembrance of him. We're going to come to the table and remember what he's done. We're going to remember what he's promised, and we're going to allow his spirit to come and change us in the here and now. But as a way of preparing to do that, I want to invite us actually to take some time to intentionally remember. So you can settle into your chair in a comfortable way. You can close your eyes if you want to. Take a couple deep breaths. And let's just ask some questions that might help us remember where we've been, what God has done, and where we're going, what he's promised. So first, ask yourself uh, about a time. When is a time that you sensed God, especially close or active in your life? Was it a good time? Was it a hard time? As you think about that, ask yourself, who else was with you? Who are the people that were sustaining you, encouraging you, praying for you? Who are the people that God used? Have you thanked them? Have you told them? If they're no longer with us, take a moment to thank God for them. As we're thinking about where we've been on this journey, Ask yourself now, where do you sense God, where do you sense God has you right now on this journey? What are your needs? What are your deficits? And last, ask yourself what you need. What do you need from God? Maybe it's faith or hope, confidence in his promises. Maybe it's restoration or healing. What do you need for the journey that lies ahead? We come to the table as needy people. We come to uh, partake of these elements, not because we've deserved it, but because we're desperate. But God promises to be present in this place. And when we come to this table remembering where we've been, remembering what God's done, remembering where we're going, remembering what he's promised, we find that we are the slaves who have been set free. We find that we are the disciples around that table in need of forgiveness. We 
remember where we've been, we remember where we're going, and we remember together. And God promises to meet us 